Hey everyone, thanks for watching Bridgeport's Brightest Lights. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the behind the scenes of how I program my lights and what computer setup you should use to program your lights. Now if you're wondering why I'm making this video, it's because about a month ago, I put out a poll on YouTube on my community tab, which I unlocked then and I didn't know you could unlock it. I thought you had to get to a thousand subscribers. But I asked what types of videos do you guys want to see and 46% of you, or almost half, said behind the scenes videos. And that's kind of hard to do now since the light show is all taken down and stuff because there's nothing to show the behind the scenes to. So first off, in this video, I will not be explaining how to fully program your lights. I've already made a video on that, and you can check it up right up here. I'll have a link that you can click. It's almost three hours long, but it does go through every setting in X lights. So I'm gonna be showing you just a few simple things how I program my lights, and then also what my computer setup is so you know how fast of a computer you need. Now, for the 2020 light show, all the sequences in the 2020 light show and 99% of the sequences in the 2021 light show were recorded on my old laptop. And that was a really slow computer. It had 1.1 gigahertz and four gigs of RAM and two cores in the processor. So if you don't know all that computer talk, let's just say it's really slow. And it actually didn't do a terrible job programming the lights. My first light show in 2020, it did uh, very good with programming it. It had about 500 lights that was programming. Render time, which if you don't know what that is, that's basically the computer telling all the lights when to turn on. Render time did not take that long with the 500 lights, but then it became about a minute to render the lights when I added videos on a projector. So that was kind of a problem. And then last year's light show, which I was programming 4,093 lights on, that was a lot slower. Render time sometimes took two to three minutes and was about five minutes if I had a video in it. And it started to get really slow. It started to skip, things weren't load, you couldn't see the house preview that well. So I did get a new computer. Any decent computer should be fine for programming under about 5,000 lights. As long as you don't have videos on any projectors or you don't have any very dense props, you don't need a super fast computer and you don't need one if you have less than 5,000 lights. When you start getting over 5,000 lights, then you might want something that's slightly faster, maybe a little bit better, more RAM, more CPU. And then when you get into big numbers, like five digit amounts of pixels, 10,000 plus pixels, you're gonna need a pretty fast computer. Now when you're programming your lights, I do highly, highly recommend you have two monitors. And that will help so you can have all of your computer settings to program the lights on one monitor, your main monitor, and then have your house preview for what your house will look like on another monitor. Because if you don't have that, your house preview will look really small and it won't give you the big idea of what your light show is really going to look like. You can even use three monitors, but that's slightly overkill because there aren't you don't need that many monitors. I have two monitors and I'm just fine with them. For the first half of the sequences that I recorded in 2020, I only had one monitor and what I do is I'd make the house preview go in a small square so I could program everything, look at it, and then when I was done programming the lights, I'd let that go up to the full screen and then see how that looks and go through it. And if I didn't like it, then I'd go and fix it. But getting a second monitor does really help. And then for a keyboard or mouse, you don't need anything fancy for that. Just a regular keyboard, a regular mouse will be fine. And then for speakers or headphones, I'd recommend you use headphones instead of speakers because it allows you to hear every little part of the song, every little beat that you might want to sequence in whereas you can't hear it that well with speakers. And then I'd use actual headphones. I only have earbuds, but headphones, actual headphones, I think would be better. Whatever you do though, you do not want wireless headphones. If you have wireless headphones, there is a delay when the audio gets to them. So if you're trying to sequence your song, you're adding in that delay. And when you go to have it over the radio or, or over speakers outside, however you're gonna have it, the lights aren't gonna be synced at all and it's gonna look horrible. So if you are gonna use headphones, make sure they're wired into your computer, nothing wireless. So that's all the overview. Now let me go show you my computer setup. Now this is my setup here and you don't need something this fancy. The reason why I have like a tripod back there or a light right there is because I have been making some gaming videos and some other videos on my other channel called Epic Bros Content. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out right up there. I'll leave a card for it. 
um, I just do some funny challenge videos and I have been making a few gaming videos but that's why this advanced stuff is here you don't really need that this is a nice little keyboard it can light up and do some other stuff but you don't need anything fancy like that all you need is two monitors and then a main computer you can use a laptop or a desktop now my computer is an Acer it has 16 gigabytes of RAM um, the Intel i5 I think 4.4 gigahertz max and four cores so it is really fast you probably don't need something that fast if you have under maybe 7,000 pixels if you have something over that you might need something a little bit faster and now like I said you should have two monitors this is where I program everything and then this is where I can see the house preview and this year I will be programming the house preview in 3d which I really think is cool so I probably will have a future video about this this is not the setup of how the lights are going to look this year. This is just what I've been working on. And I will have a video out when I finish what the setup is going to look like. So yeah, this is really all you need. You only need two monitors. They don't even need to be this big as long as you can see them. And you can have your house preview on one, your main settings on the other one. And then you just have your computer, your keyboard, and your mouse. And then these are the headphones I use. Like I said, I'd recommend using actual headphones, not earbuds. But I do have speakers right there too. If I did want to use those for some reason. But like I said, you should probably use headphones. Okay, so now I'm on my computer. And for the rest of this video, I'm just going to be showing some uh, other stuff. How I sequence the songs. If you don't know how x Lights works, like I said, go check out the video that I linked up um, earlier. I can only screen record one screen. So when I want to show you the house preview, I'll just drag it over onto this screen. But this is the house preview. And I really like how 3D works. And like I said, I will have a video probably coming up about it so i have an old sequence because i haven't made any new sequences for this year this is come look at my house from last year and this is the only song i could bring up because it's the only one that's not copyright the first thing i usually program if i'm making a sequence that has words in it is the singing faces these singing faces right here are the first things i program so i can just get them out of the way because they are the hardest thing to program but usually i program these first to sing along with the song that's usually what i do first and then if i do ha plan on having a video like this one does it says welcome to the show and some other text about our facebook page and youtube channel i always have that video playing and if i do have a video i always add that in last because if i don't it will make your rendering time longer so i don't recommend doing that and then honestly for actually sequencing the song I don't have that many tips because I personally don't think I'm the best at sequencing songs. Usually what I try to do is if I hear a beat or something like, I don't know, I usually make the floodlights go to that or something, maybe the arches. And I honestly don't know much to say. One thing that I really don't like that I do is a lot of times I use whole house effects and that's just because they're simple. If you don't want to make extraordinary sequences, then you can use mostly whole house effects because they do look nice. A whole house effect is basically where the entire house is doing one whole effect. So, in that part, it does look kind of nice and I do use it quite often. But there are some points in time where I don't use whole house effects like right here. I have each prop almost doing its own thing and I just use whole house effects more because they're easier to program but this year for programming the lights I think I'm going to be doing something different not sure. All the main tips I have is usually to just if you have seen faces program those first and add in the video last. Now if I was to render this and I will on camera you could see down here it shows the time it takes to render. So. It might lag if I try and render it, but if I click render, you can click this and it'll give you some details about how it's rendering the stuff. But that took 10 seconds. Usually it doesn't take that long, usually about 8 seconds. But it's taking that long because I have screen recording software open. And now the main setting pages I usually have open is I have the house preview like always and that's usually on my other monitor. And then I have the main timeline take up most amount of my space most of the time because I like to see every single little part of the song. I like it spread out. And then I usually keep the color tab above it because I don't use most of these settings underneath it. I only use the actual colors. So that's why I only need these to be shown and I can click which colors I want. You obviously need the effect settings so you can change the effect stuff. But then you don't necessarily need layer settings or layer blending. 
I actually did not use layer blending or layer settings in the 2020 Christmas light show and for half of the 2021 sequences. I didn't learn how to use those till halfway through. So you don't need to use these, but they do make your sequences look a lot better. There are some other windows that you can bring up, like display elements, but I usually don't do that because you could just right click right here and then bring up display elements. And then you can get a model preview, so it'll show the preview for each model. And then there are some other stuff, but I usually don't keep these open. So that's just a few quick tips I had when programming your lights. It wasn't really a lot. And mostly this video was to tell you just what computer you should use. Now, I'm sorry if this video is really short and I'm sorry for not making other interesting videos like I usually do, but I don't have anything to work on. All the lights are in the garage and honestly, I don't have anything I need to do right now and it probably won't start until spring or summer. So the videos aren't probably going to be uploaded as much. Maybe a video every two weeks probably until then because I have nothing interesting to work on. So I am taking a little bit of a break and that's why the uploads aren't as frequently as usual and that's why this video was just kind of thrown in. I couldn't really think of any other videos to make. But if you do have any ideas for videos you want to see, comment them down below and I'll try and answer every comment. Now since I don't have a lot of stuff to be working on for the lights, I will be working on my other channel a lot more so you'll see a lot more videos on there, Epic Bros content like I said earlier that I put in the video and you will be able to click it at the end of this video if you want to go check out those videos and I'll have it in the description. But yeah, that's about everything for the video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and if you enjoy the videos that I'm making and enjoy the tips that I'm giving, then in mean the life you could subscribe we're only about 150 subscribers away from a thousand and i'm really hoping we can get to a thousand subscribers before summer i'm not sure if it'll happen but if you do enjoy these videos subscribe because it will mean a lot so thank you for watching and i will see you next time